We're joined by the Education Secretary, Gavin Williamson, to talk about this breaking news that broke this morning at the... Government is going to intervene and start talks with the FA and various football associations and the football associations and supporters mm -hmm. to try and resolve what is going on here in this breakaway Super League. Um, the Prime Minister has described the proposed European Super League, which includes six leading English clubs, as ludicrous. Yeah, Gavin Williamson uh, joins us now, as you can see. Very good morning to you. Uh, the Culture Secretary yesterday said that the government would do whatever it takes to stop this going ahead. What does whatever it takes mean? Well, firstly, I think everyone's united that what is being proposed is simply wrong. Uh, it is the people that uh, own these six clubs that seem to be more interested in the money uh, than actually where their clubs come from and what sustains their clubs, which is the, the communities that have supported them and the towns and cities are, uh, across the country. And, and also ignoring the fact that actually the key element of what makes... Uh, football so successful is the competition, not just the competition of who wins a league, but actually who who's, who survives, okay, who is able are, to avoid yes. the drop. So and, uh, uh, it's a completely wrong approach that they have actually taken. And this is why Oliver Dowden yesterday in the House of Commons yeah. sets out real clear measures about how we're going to tackle this. OK, can you just talk us through those real clear measures? Because I don't think you're going to find a dissenting voice on this programme. The idea of getting rid of relegation and jeopardy in a competition, you know, makes the competition null and void right from the start. And many, many people, I mean, it's a united outcry about the fact that this seems to just be about the money. But... If I was one of those billionaire owners, I might say, well, that's what business is. And frankly, we've had a really tough year with coronavirus. We haven't been getting the sort of receipts that we might have done with fans in the stadiums. So why are you blaming us for trying to go out and be uh, self-sufficient and follow the money? But, but clubs right across the spectrum, whether small or large, have had challenges and the government has stepped in in order to be able to support uh, uh, so many clubs up and down the country. Yeah, but you're but right look, to at, say, but look at how much outcry there was about that when Liverpool, for instance, took furlough money. You know, the, the, there is a, a public sort of opprobrium against these clubs that they, they're owned by big billionaires, so why should they be then subject to government money. So they might also argue, actually, let us go and follow the money. Let us go and make loads of money, because eventually that will trickle down to other clubs. Well, I think we all know that football is something that is so much more than a business. Uh, there's a responsibility, there's a leadership role that they play in communities. I think about where I live. Uh, up in Wolverhampton. Actually, uh, Wolverhampton uh, Wanderers isn't just a football club, it's actually very much the beating heart of uh, the city and the community that it's part of. And that's why uh, the Culture Secretary set out a number of steps yesterday in the House of Commons. The first of those is actually fully backing the Football Association and UEFA. Uh, we're giving them notice. Uh, we're giving these six football clubs the, the yellow card, making it clear okay, to them that so, they can step Gavin back Williamson, from look, their... Look, uh, you know, my club is totally against this. Many clubs, particularly the 14 left behind in the Premier League, are against this. It, and clearly the government is against it. What I'm saying is that if they're businesses who can operate uh, in order to make a profit... What can the government actually do to step in and stop them doing this? So, so the first stage that we're doing is we're fully backing the FA and UEFA, making it clear that there's an opportunity for these clubs to be able to step back from this move, something that has been roundly condemned not just by fans of other teams, but actually players uh, within some of those six teams themselves and including a manager. So it's their opportunity to step back, realise what they're proposing is wrong and be able to take a different course and a different approach. Is it if legally that isn't, wrong? Um, is it legal? Um, have you got legal um, recourse or regulatory and, 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 authority well, to do that? Well, if, uh, and sorry for talking over you uh, there, I didn't mean to be rude. Um, what, uh, if that isn't successful in terms of being able to do that, 
uh, then the culture secretary has made it clear that the second stage is uh, looking at what further action the government can take. And that might be through competition law, that might be through other different approaches. There's many teams uh, that have performed better than some of the six that have been uh, chosen to go into this league that haven't actually been uh, included in it. It's, it's simply not right, it's not appropriate, it's not the way uh, football should be working. And the culture secretary has made it absolutely clear that the government will look at taking further action in order to make sure that these uh, clubs uh, look at it in the round and recognise they're part of a football family. And thirdly, and finally, uh, the culture secretary set out yesterday uh, the launch of a fan-based review uh, led by uh, my brilliant colleague, Tracy Crouch, who will be looking at this, and that will be reporting back. And the Prime Minister, by meeting stakeholders, by meeting fans today, uh, recognises how important uh, this is yeah. and is absolutely committed to taking the action that is required to ensure that this European Super League that's going to exclude so many, uh, ignore the roots of the game, ignore the purpose of uh, these uh, football clubs about being part of a community. Uh, Mage do everything he can do to make sure it doesn't go ahead. Look, whilst everyone will appreciate the support coming from the government, there will be some cynicism that it's just a, a political goal scoring going on, really, and we want to see some detail of what you can do. Can I just ask you directly, could you ban foreign teams coming here to the UK? Would you be able to do that? Because those are the big things that would have to be in place to stop this really happening, because... They're just business. They're, they're, they're competing. I mean, you haven't, you haven't tackled the big tech giants who are also taking billions in this country, and which, which is at the, the in arguably I mean, smaller companies and the smaller people suffer. Mm. You haven't tackled media regulation, which is owned by very few billion foreign investors, billionaire foreign investors. You've chosen this route particularly. Will you be able to actually do anything about it? Can you ban UK teams coming here? And can you charge them a big windfall tax, for example? So the first thing we'd like to do is to reach agreement with those teams in order to be give them the opportunity to step back from what they're proposing, because it isn't good for the game. Uh, it isn't good for the communities which they're built upon. And it's not, um, it's, it's not really good for this country either. Uh, so uh, the government's been clear that it will take the action that's required. Uh, I touch upon the fact that whether that's through uh, uh, sanctions through, through uh, competition law, uh, other such measures. But the first course of action is to try and reach agreement, get these clubs to recognise the, uh, the, the reckless and the inappropriate approach that they're taking and recognise they're part of a football community. Step back from it. It's a clear yellow card from the government. It's time that these six clubs listened do, and took the appropriate action. Do, do, but do if we... that doesn't happen... Uh, the government will take further action to ensure it doesn't go ahead. Do, do we need to look at the bigger issue of foreign investment in Britain? This is football and it's touching everybody emotionally, but it happens everywhere, doesn't it? Like I mentioned, it happens in the tech businesses, it happens in the media business. Is there something that needs to be done? Does it need to be better regulated so it has British interests at heart and not just money and profiteering? Uh, you're, you're right to say that we need to look at how we best manage foreign investment. Uh, and we've been incredibly successful in attracting foreign investment into this country, whether it's uh, uh, car plants such as uh, Nissan and Toyota, uh, but also it's when big companies are making big investments in Britain to make sure this is always in British industry. And that's something that the government has already been looking at as to ensure what steps that it can take to always protect British industry. And you look at the amazing success of AstraZeneca, what it's been able to do in terms of delivering the vaccine. And I think we've been greatly assisted about that being a great British business that's been able to deliver on that. I'm just not sure uh, if, you know, as a fan, what I understand the government is going to intervene to do. Because at the moment, you've said we're going, we've shown them the yellow card, we're going to take extra action, we have to get them to understand that these clubs are rooted in their communities and this is not the right thing to do. But have you... I mean, is, is it illegal? Should they be punished? Should they... Can you put an injunction in place to stop them doing this? Do you think that these six clubs should be kicked out of the Premier League? if they go ahead. 
I mean, what, what are the sanctions that are being proposed, the actual legal sanctions? So, so, so as you heard when the uh, Culture and Media Secretary was giving a statement to the House of Commons, he isn't ruling out any form of sanctions. Uh, he's keeping all of his options open. But his clear and absolute and resolute commitment to making sure that this doesn't go ahead. But it wouldn't be right to be able to be in a place where we're parading exactly what sanctions that we're going to be doing, because we want these clubs to take the opportunity to step back to recognise what they're proposing isn't the right and uh, uh, proper approach that uh, they should be taking. Okay. Uh, and if they don't, it will then be for the Culture Secretary to be setting out to the House of Commons what further action is to be taken. But it, uh, uh, as, as you know, I'm sort of a, uh, very much here to talk about uh, apprenticeships and the, the work that we're doing on apprenticeships. So uh, very much recognising there's actually, uh, you know, whether it's in uh, sports clubs, uh, the creative uh, uh, media such as television and of course which is so incredibly important in terms of supporting uh, our football clubs about how we're making that investment to be able to create more apprenticeships for young people to take the opportunity to take these up in areas such as creative industries construction um, and many other sectors um, but uh, uh, you know it's incredibly important for, uh, for you know whole creative sector that we actually sort of deliver yeah. on these. You're here supporting young people today, but only a week or so ago, you were accusing young people of losing their discipline and order throughout lockdown. Uh, we haven't managed to speak to you about that, or at least I haven't. What, what, what did you mean by that? I mean, it's all well and good coming and say you're supporting young people now, but what did you mean by young people throughout a national pandemic uh, where, where they've seen people suffering, they've not been able to go to school, not been able to see their friends or family, some of them stick stuck in one room, have lost their discipline. What do you mean by that, Gavin Williamson? So, so what we've seen, uh, we've seen children, families, uh, teachers doing an amazing job all the way through this pandemic. But actually, as children have returned back to school, there's been, you know, children have faced many different challenges. And what we do recognise by having, you know, good behaviour policies in schools, making sure that there's a good discipline in schools, actually, we create a really help uh, you know, really good, secure environment. No, I, I appreciate environment that, but how are you, why are you, link, why, you, but why um, are you linking it? I appreciate that. Everyone understands, yeah, we don't want bad discipline in school, of course not. But, but it was a very strange thing to level it at children at a time that they've gone through a pandemic and they've been forced to stay indoors during lockdown. I, I don't understand the link. What were you saying? That who, Who's to well, blame there? Because they weren't at school. I, 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 so I, who, who I, you I, were you sure blaming parents? Here. Are you blaming I, parents? I'm sure, as you've probably read the whole article, that you'll have seen this. I didn't actually uh, say that. What we did sort of say, I did say, is that actually by creating strong behaviour policies in schools, making sure that children don't uh, aren't using uh, their mobile phones during classes, uh, making sure that they uh, we're creating a much more sort of a safe environment for children uh, by having those strong behaviour policies. And children have had to adjust from uh, learning at home to learning back in the classroom. By making this adjustment, you know, it's created some challenges for children. Mm. But by having these strong behaviour policies, you're making sure that you're cracking down on bullying, you're creating that safer, happier environment for children, as well as for teachers themselves, but also creating the best opportunity for them to be able to learn and to be able to succeed. Okay. But, you know, this is why we're taking the steps in terms of, you know, removing mobile phones from the classroom. We've seen some of our most successful schools right around the country take that policy, uh, pioneer it and deliver it. Okay. And actually, the results for children are significant, you know, and they... Well, a lot know, of, yeah, but to be fair, a lot of teachers rely on mobile phones to get access to the internet in the classroom. So, it, practically, that for some, that's impossible. Before we go, we cannot let you go, Gavin Williamson, before putting to you um, what your former colleague, Foreign Office Minister Alan Duncan, said in the extract from his uh, diaries. I mean, I find this absolutely extraordinary that someone that you work with uh, described you in these terms. Self-serving, venomous, and in a rush to ascend the greasy poll. He said that your appointment as Defence Secretary was the most extraordinary cabinet appointment that he could think of. Absolutely absurd, uh, undeserved, and brazenly self serving I mean, I, I find it awkward reading that out to you. What was it like reading it? 
Oh, I must confess, I haven't sort of uh, haven't yet purchased one of Alan's books, but well, I'm not uh, maybe that's uh, uh, maybe that's sort of something for me to do over the summer holiday period. Um, did you ever get on? Uh, obviously not. I think it's fair to say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how does it make you feel? I mean, clearly there's real hate there from a, a former colleague. I mean. It... Can't make you feel very my, good. My, my, my focus is always about doing the job that I'm doing, which is actually delivering the very best for children. Uh, there's concerns about whether we're able to get children back into school, whether we're able to roll out the largest testing programme in our uh, at schools or this country has ever seen. We've been able to do that. We've got children back in the classroom enjoying it. That's where my focus is. That's where my focus is going to continue to be, you know, uh, delivering for children that, up and down the country. Well, and, and um, as a parent uh, of school-aged children and a university son, I'm, I'm very glad that you're committed to that. But do you think that that's a good... He provides a good role model, talking about a former colleague. And to be fair to you, you're not the only one who comes in uh, for a lashing from him. Is that <laughs> the sort of behaviour you think is acceptable from a former minister? I, I, my, my focus is delivering on for, for your children, my constituents' children, all the children in this country, and, and my own children included. So I, I will maybe save uh, uh, reading Alan's book for a, a little bit later on in the year. And maybe at some stage you can write one of your own, which you take uh, <laughs> revenge. Gavin Williamson, thanks very much indeed. Thank you for joining us.